Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. This is Security Matters. And today we're going to get into something that um, I think a lot of you may not be familiar with. Um, you may have come across Ray Secure, uh, the company, but but you may not always talk to your customers about their mailroom, their mailroom security, and some of the, the things that they might want to consider. Um, you, you've probably seen some of this stuff in the news around the White House and the Pentagon and folks like that, a lot of VIPs. But um, this threat's very real, and we have a, a true expert with us today. Will Plummer is here. He is the CSO of uh, Ray Secure, and um, he's got a, quite a bit of history with um, with EOD and some of these types of things. So I want Will to introduce himself, uh, get you into, let you understand a little bit about his history, and uh, then we'll get into mailroom security. Will, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, Andrew. I appreciate it too, man. All right. So uh, a lot of our audience, you may have met some of them. It's at the, I don't know if you guys were at ISC West and you sure. were starting to make the rounds, but um, go ahead. And uh, for those that may not know you, uh, as much as you care to share, I know we don't give it all away on social media these days, but um, what, what we can learn about your background and then uh, then we'll get into the topic. Uh, sure. Thanks. So uh, as Andrew mentioned, I'm the CSO for Race Secure. Uh, my background's military. I did 25 years in the Army with the bomb squad and uh, kind of took that background and put it in corporate America where people don't necessarily I don't know, pick up on some of the problems that that uh, they get presented with. So through my time, I was both enlisted and officer. I did 12 years as an EOD team leader, running around solving all the problems. Then I flipped over the administrative side as an officer and kind of started telling people what to do and, and how to handle that. So um, it was real fulfilling. I liked it. I got to play both sides and, you know, it, it kind of cheated towards the end because if you've been on the enlisted side and all of a sudden you become the guy in charge, you, you kind of know both sides of the game. So it uh, helped me out quite a bit. That's awesome. Great career. Thanks. Thanks so much for your service. I appreciate that. I never got out of the enlisted ranks myself in the Navy. I, I really wasn't smart enough. So they, they made a good choice keeping me there. They made a mistake <laughs> and they gave me a commission. I really said that. Right on. Well, let's let's um let's talk about some of these threats. First of all, I um <clears throat> I'm, I'm not super familiar with a lot of this type of work, but I'm aware of things like ricin, right, which is this right. um, powder that can come from castor beans. And I know there I don't know if there's antidotes for it. I know it's a highly toxic substance. Um, but talk to us a little bit about the threats that can show up in in, in mail in a, in a small package that people may not consider as a threat, right? A, a, a card, a, a bomb doesn't have to be a huge box, right? Right. So there's a couple of things that one uh, for all of us older folks, bombs don't tick anymore. Uh, all days of the Unabomber aren't there. Uh, now it's solid state. You can do everything in really, really small amounts. Most of the threats okay. that we see are actually less than half an inch thick and weigh less than 10 ounces. Uh, wow. On top of that. Most of the stuff that you look at, um, like you mentioned, ricin is a great one. You can order every part of that through the internet. You can get it all delivered. You probably get caught if you order too much, but it doesn't take much at all to cause something that can be harmful if somebody injects, ingests, or inhales it. Um, most of the time, thankfully, it's nothing. I realize that almost all these events that come through that shut down companies and corporations, it's, uh, it's a hoax a lot of the times. Uh, mm -hmm. When it's not, uh, every White House since 2003, every single administration has had a ricin event mailed to the uh, mailed to the facility. Uh, that's the big end, the one that you see all the time. Uh, wow. But then if you look at the smaller events, last year, Dr. Um, Fauci had a white powder thrown in his house. Uh, Rand Paul had one about three months ago. The Republican wow. uh, Party for Arizona had one the week before that. Um, really, these are small items that people just drop in the mail. They think anonymously and they get delivered. And when they do, you get the reaction on the other end because you have to act like it is ricin or like it is anthrax because the day you don't mm -hmm. is the day that it actually is wow yeah and i know with the rise of these you know domestic violent you know threat domestic you know what they call them, dv the domestic violence terrorists um, you know this this political type of activity or politically targeted activity um it, it could dr drill down into um I, I think there's been judges that have had stuff like yes. this happen so like um law, uh, law enforcement type folks and obviously if you work in the security industry we could easily become the target of someone's angst, whether it was a, a, a you know, a, a job mishap that, you know, maybe our surveillance system picked up on and someone got fired and then hates the security company. I know we used to get named in all the lawsuits, so I'm sure there's enough people that hate <laughs> us that, that as security integrators, we should, you know, if, if we're not talking to our clients about this, we may also should be thinking about it for our own organizations. Um, are the, are the, <clears throat> so are the types, are there a lot of these types of substances out there? So, because a liquid to me seems like it'd be easy to see, but I, you know, I don't know. It is. So, um, what, what's interesting is uh, people, for some reason, think that if they put fuel or some sort of caustic material in a plastic container or like a seal a meal and they ship it, it's going to miraculously burst on the other end. 
The reality is most time it's in, it's in transit. So somebody puts pressure on the box or package, or usually it's a flat, and uh, it leaks at that point. It's either in the USPS system where it's going through a, a roller, or it's when it gets put on site and somebody just leaves pressure on it. Um, liquids are not all that common. A lot of times you see liquids nowadays as drugs. Uh, the drug has, drugs have increased exponentially uh, since the mm -hmm. pandemic. Drug dealers don't stand on the corners anymore. Now they just mail it. Um, there, there's a wow. serious amount of, of possibilities. So you get everything from white powder threats, like we mentioned. Um, there's a lot of threats. There are people who are openly, like you said, politically environment. We've got, you know, people who think that they could just put whatever they want to on a piece of mail and threaten people and send it out. Uh, oh, the oh. judge comment is very interesting since the January 6th event. Uh, those people across the United States came from everywhere. And you're seeing threats to federal and local uh, courthouses because the judges are either going to get targeted because they're going to be one giving a verdict. The lawyers are getting targeted because they're either charging or defending people where they're involved. And you end up with both sides coming at these individuals. Uh, wow. Governments have been getting it hit significantly. Uh, be pretty good this year. Wow. Yeah, it's really, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not much, there's not really a winner here, especially, you know, when there's people on both sides of an issue that are, you know, prone to violence as we've seen. Um, so are these, um, are these, uh, What's the commonality? I mean, are we are we having tens of thousands of events a week? Is it yeah. tens of thousands a year? And just, you know, kind of just in North America, and I'm not sure. You know, I'm sure a lot of this, these events don't get released. They're probably classified type types of events. But um, what can you share with us about what you know? Let's let's talk about maybe corporate America. Right. So uh, we do track that. There's no real number out there. Uh, not so the day I walked out of uniform, I'm, I'm a big numbers person. So I track open source what happens across the United States and international now, but across the United States to corporate America. And that's when they get caught. So nobody's going to stand up for a major corporation and say, hey, by the way, this happened in my mailroom last week and we had to do all these things. So only when it hits the open source, we really get the full scope of it. And we're talking, you know, 40, 50, 60 events a week. Uh, so wow. a lot of that's federal America. But for corporate America, you'll see it happen. You know, Subway got hit last year. Exxon got hit three weeks ago. Uh, it's very, wow. very common. And when you get a first responder in, that's usually when a reporter shows up, that's when we hear about it. Uh, unfortunately, sure. a lot of the folks that we talk to, uh, they come to us after an event. And that's rightly so. I mean, that, that's yeah. your response to something happening to you. But uh, corporate America gets hit a lot, three wow. times a year per company per year. And so the the for the folks that don't the, probably everybody thinks that the mail guys usps fedex catch this stuff before it shows up in your mailbox um let's talk about that problem there about i'm sure it's a volume issue but uh but maybe it's a resource issue as well it, it's it's threefold so volume and resources one uh, those, those the amount of time it takes to have somebody screen that that's extra money two is fedex ups those corporations they're private entities they're there to make mm -hmm. money so when you start talking about adding security requirements on top of them, their logistics, which is why they make their money, doesn't want to slow anything down. And that's unfortunately what we do. A lot of times when something gets caught in FedEx or UPS, it's because the clerk behind the desk that's taking this package goes, I don't have to take this, I'm a private carrier, and something's off. And usually they'll put it aside, then they'll call a you know, police officer or whoever come take a look at it. Um, logistically speaking, that's what stops most of the screening efforts. The amount of time it takes to slow things down and take a good solid look at it. Yeah, security and speed. We've always always fight that battle, don't we? You know, there's sure. a, there's the secure way and there's the fast way. <laughs> that's all. It's kind of all we, you know. It reminds me of this classic access control problem. Um, so so you mentioned that the people are a part of the solution. You know, the the guy getting the package, maybe the right. person that tries to submit it or, or have it sent seems suspicious. Um, is uh, is there training available, or do you folks conduct training for these types of folks? I, I'm I'm just thinking of our like our mail pickup, you know, and and uh, I'm pretty sure Cheryl in our office hasn't received any type of training for what to look for when she's getting a package in, in the office. So is that do you extend that into the mailroom staff themselves? T talk a little bit about the the awareness because it can can help. So we absolutely do. Um, one of the things that's interesting is a lot of corporate America doesn't have a training platform in place, so for, we built one. We built an LMS so our clients can go take a look at it. Most people in that environment that are working that job, uh, they're most of them honestly entry level. They're working their way up in the company. You end up with a high turnover rate. And with that, you have a lot of training requirements. So we built something that people can go sit down, learn a little bit, see what's going on. 
And then for, for us, we provide quarterly webinars where our clients can dial in and take a look and see what's going on. We talk about the threats as have happened in the last 90 to 180 days. Um, and then there is training available from a lot of other companies and corporations. It's actually good to tap into. One thing that really works well and we found resonates with most of corporate America is once you put a training plan in place, it, it doesn't take much. You get a really good train the trainer philosophy in and then you, you get your company, let's say, mantra on how you're going to handle things. And then once that's built, it just repeats on itself and you end up with a better prospect and a better product every time. Mm. So what's the biggest problem you encounter? I'm sure it's just that nothing happens, right? The mail comes in, it gets yep. distributed and no one cares, right? It's a speed thing. Get it, get it to the desk or to the department it's supposed to be delivered to. Um, is, is, let's say that's the base, the, low, the lowest hanging fruit to what's the, what are more advanced um, sort of companies? Um, tell us a little bit about their processes. So uh, some of the more advanced companies have some actually really well thought out uh, combination between logistics and security. That's the most common problem that we see is responsibility. So when you're talking to a major corporation, who owns the building, facilities usually, who's responsible for the function of moving mail from the time it enters to the time it gets delivered, facilities, maybe some operational side, and then security kind of sprinkles in from the size as, wait, you have to do this process. You need to do something in place. So we found the most successful companies have a really good marriage between those two entities. And oftentimes it's a third party. So if you talk to a major corporation, uh, they're not gonna have a dot my company name, email address. They're going to have a dot, some other third party that's under contract. So getting them to buy in it as well. There's certain things mm -hmm. you can and can't do within that contract. And those obligations are often, you know, need to be thought ahead of time before you end up trying to execute this, this plan. Yeah, I was thinking of the situation of like equipment that we deploy for our customers. You know, it, it should be bench tested, right? It should be set up and tested in our lab before it goes out. But I know sometimes there's delivery issues. Something's got to go as soon as it shows up. So here goes my guy with a box that's not been opened. He hauls it into a hospital, perhaps. And is it a real box? I mean, do um, let me ask you a question. Is there data on the uh, amount of times that this item actually went through the mail? Or do we, is it like faked where the person you know, brings it themselves, you know, because they don't, they're afraid it'll get caught in transit. So they actually make it look like it's a real package, but it's not actually gone through the mail, it just showed up in your box. That that happens more often than not. So most of the time, right. it depends on chains of custody. So UPS, FedEx, all those companies, you have to present yourself or at least your credit card. There's a chain of custody immediately, immediately online. One of the things that shows up is most of these threats don't have a chain of custody. So you end up with people trying mm -hmm. to mimic uh, inner office mail, trying to mimic uh, just local deliveries. And just drop something off at a desk and see if they can get it inside. Uh, there's a major corporation in California that's very well known who has a problem because they're so well known in the city that they're in in Southern California that people go to a, the UPS bus route. They'll drop UPS boxes with fake printed from home addresses and printed from home labels. The UPS guy will pick it up, go, yeah, I know where they are and will carry it directly to their facility. One of wow. the biggest problems is people trying to send in most of the time it's um, audition tapes, but when it shows up, it's just, and carried by a private company that knows where they are so they just drop it off wow That's they're like the, the unsuspecting agent right that's Kinda, interesting yeah, kind of, the last sure. it's like there, yeah yeah it's taking taking the taking spam to a whole new level there it's a it's physical and and you know uh it, it, the threat is 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 obviously real um this is awesome let's uh i tell you what it's about we're about halfway through let's we're gonna take a break we're gonna pay some bills and we'll be right back in one minute with will Plummer. stick around Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program comes on every other Monday, one o'clock, and we talk about a lot of different subjects, all of them law related in some way, either life or practice. And I try to have a diversity of guests that can talk about different topics of interest. So please join us, Think Tech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea program, every other Monday, one o'clock in the afternoon. Aloha. Hey, Aloha, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. 
we are talking about mailroom insecurity, I think, at this point. Um, Will Plummer is with us from Ray Secure, and uh, we're going to get into some detection stuff. And I, I'm sure most everyone's familiar with going through the airport and going through detectors. And, you know, sometimes I guess you put you in this line. Sometimes they put you in the one where you stand up and raise your arms and it spins around. So there's a lot of different types of detection. You know, your bags are being running through a scanner that's doing some detection. Um, so we'll talk to us a little bit about about what we're looking for, how, how small could it be, you know, if it's a powder, if it's a liquid, what are, what are we doing to try to find this type of stuff in our mailroom? So uh, most of the threats, uh, let's break them up into two categories. So if it's going okay. to go after a person. So what Rand Paul saw when he was hit three months ago was probably 25 or sorry, 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams, enough wow. to where it's not going to be felt when you have physical and tactile inspection, but when you open it up, it's going to spill out on the table. Everybody gets to react and, and it's going to be bad. Um, that is quite common. If you look at that amount, that's the same amount that hit Dr. Fauci and the same amount that generally goes after he individuals, C-suite style staff, that kind of stuff. If you're looking this is at a powder. A, yeah, powder, correct. This is if a powder looking, we're talking about? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. And if you look at like a facility and someone's to shut them down with a powder, it's often 2,500 to 5,000 milligrams, a lot more, but both of those aren't something you're going to pick up with x-ray. Uh, there's not enough mass or material there for an x-ray to see it. In fact, most this is most companies make this mistake when they use an x-ray to scan their mail where most of the threats lie. They'll take all 800 pieces of mail, they'll dump it into a bucket, they'll run it through, and they're not really going to catch much that way. That's just wow. not necessarily effective. Um, I've seen that a few too many times, and it's unfortunately somewhat of a standard. Uh, if you're going to go up a little bit, like what we do, when you mention you raise your hands over your head, that's millimeter wave. So we're working in that spectrum with our equipment, and that is something that's you know, it's non-ionized. You put your hands in it, you can mess with it, but it'll pick up those density changes, those 250 milligrams of powder, 5,000 milligrams of powder, things that x-ray is just not going to see. And then uh, the another way that you could do it is with the a hard, bigger CT scan stuff. That's what you see when your bag is going to the airport. They're hitting that. Oh, I see. And um, just just for the audience, how much, uh, let's just talk about ricin. How much ricin is toxic? Very, very small amounts. So um, the second half of your question from a second ago, how much is going to hurt you? Well, uh, if you can get an inhale, ingest, or inject, a minuscule amount is going to cause a lot of pain. The problem is the transition between the envelope itself or whatever it's packaged in to where it's got to be enough to where you interact with it and it infects you. You're not going to see many people get hurt with ricin, honestly. That's It's really hard to do unless you are opening it up and inhaling, injecting, or in, in, ingesting it. It's not going to get to you. Uh, okay. You do see people react, though. It's interesting. If you um, you look at a lot of the re reports, the open source ones, you'll see people to go to the hospital or, or, you know, one person go to the hospital. Some of those people are having an emotional reaction, which is understood. Some of them are reacting to what they put in. So caustic materials, people will put in um, bleaches. Uh, I've, I've seen several recently that were wasabi powder because wasabi oh. interacts with your nasal pharynx. So when your nose gets it, you get a reaction. That's why people go to the hospital. Wow. Wow. And so and are these just warnings? Are they pranks? How, how are those dealt with? Because it's still a threat. Is This is a, a felony to do the to yes, commit is. these types of acts. This is. Uh, unfortunately, usually it's an escalation. So things always escalate from a phone call or a threat. Um, one thing mm -hmm. that I, I, I should mention is a lot of these threats we're seeing nowadays are insider. So as uh, people mm -hmm. get laid off through the pandemic and we've, we've seen this whole thing flow out is people reacting to uh, negative things in the press. Uh, it's, you're not going to see the typical Sussex package like we all grew up thinking. They're not necessarily all going to be oil stained and misspelled. It's really easy to expel a person's name nowadays. The internet exists. Uh, Word and Google will not let you misspell things. So you end up mm -hmm. with a lot of those key ID features we got used to dealing with Sussex packages no longer applying. So the screeners mm -hmm. now have to be even twice as good at what they're looking at to identify if this is a possible threat or not. Wow. Um, are what um, <clears throat> which industries are do you think most uh, proactive in in working on this? Is it like uh, banks? I'm I'm just guessing the the major critical infrastructures. But where are, are there gaps? And maybe we don't want to talk about that. I don't know. <laughs> I probably want to talk about that. But I can tell you th through what, who we deal with, um, banks are banks are pretty good. However, banks generally are slow to turn. So new technology mm -hmm. like what we present, it's uh, they're oftentimes. You know, want to see a benchmark with something else. Uh, early I adopters see. for us were a, a significant amount in tech. A lot of the technical uh, part of the 
the uh, culture kind of reached in and said, yeah, we want to try something new. We want to catch these things that x-ray is not going to catch. And it's mm -hmm. worked out well for us. So wow. that's who's been leading into it. It's been technology companies. Hmm. And is commercial a commercial level x-ray for Miriam? Has that been around a long time? Is it, um, is this, is this a five figure price point, six figure? What's the, what's the entry level, I guess, maybe for a, a facility. So for like a large x-ray scanning setup, uh, They've been around really since 2001, right? So since the wow, after okay. 2001, that's when it really hit. Before that, really nobody did much. Things just got delivered. That's how the Unabomber got along so long. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not that expensive for some of this equipment. So uh, you can get x-ray systems to come in for 60, 70K if you want to be able to look at something. The, the downside of that is what they can actually see. Those are meant for larger, heavy uh, items, a lot of metal in it, things that you need to a lot of energy to penetrate and get a good image on. Uh, images mm -hmm. systems like ours, they come in for less than that. So it, it really does uh, kind of matter what you're looking for, what your threats are. But uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you from the look at all the threats since I've been doing this for two and a half years, uh, X-ray just doesn't necessarily pick up on it. Sure, sure. Yeah, and it, it, it makes sense that you would want, I mean, I think the threat awareness, I don't know if <clears throat> people understand the the powder type of threat, and I don't know if they you know, if you get a card and you open a card and on your desk and it's, you know, pops open, like poof, you know, all the powder is going to flop in your face. Yeah. That, that, that can definitely be lethal if it's uh, some of these types of substances. Do they oh, do they also stay around? I mean, do you have to, um, if, if you've had a powder, I guess you investigate what it is, but if it is a toxic substance, now you have to clean this entire area. There's a, there's a cost to, I guess, decontaminating the area? Absolutely. So, there's two sides to that. One, um, yes, it's going to stay around. These are all persistent items. So you're not talking about some nerve gas that's going to, going to evaporate. You're going to end up with a significant bill because say it is something caustic or it is something toxic. You end up with not only just the room itself, but you have to clean the entire logistics train, everything that came through. So the anthrax mm. threats in 2001, that was untold millions of dollars to clean every little thing. And some of those rooms were stripped down from regular rooms down to two by fours just so they could recover the area. Um, wow. It is significant and the cost is a lot. And unfortunately, that cost ends up being on the individual that was targeted. There's no city or county government that's going to come in and spend their time, energy and effort to decontaminate you without you necessarily having to pay for it. Uh, I hate <laughs> to say this analogy, but think of it like a murder scene. When you get your home yeah, back, yeah. you have to pay to remediate it. When you get your office back, it's the same thing. And sometimes this could take days. Sure. Interesting. Yeah, I hadn't considered that. And I don't I don't even know, do, do insurance, are there clauses for, does insurance help out with this? Or is this a, uh, where you have yet, if you don't have any best practices, like if you haven't gone to actually looking and training your people, right? You're sort of negligent that it occurred to you. Or, and so maybe there's no coverage. I think it's, I think it's uh, unknown enough that I'm, I'm sure insurance probably will help in some of these events. And I'm sure that's not something that any company is going to let us know openly. Hey, by the way, this is how I read it. <laughs> but the flip side of that is um, people should be doing something about this. Uh, yeah. You, you, it shows up on your desk as the CSO. Okay. The reality is most of the time this is going to show up on one of your, you know, your screeners desks and in their hands and duty of care, responsibility of care. Uh, you should care as much about what happens down in the basement as you do up in with the C-suite because those people are just as important as everybody else is. Um, and that's where the effort needs to be put in place. It's not necessarily up in the uh, upper stacks. It's going to be, where people are doing this screening and where those efforts are, are hopefully catching all the possible threats. Yeah, and, and I I know that um, I think of a few facilities that receive their mail. It's like in a, a separate area, like near the loading dock, and it's kept that way. And they're they're um, I, probably they are X-raying X-raying it if I think about it. But the the that not parading it all the way through the entire the office entire to open it up front or upstairs. Now you've contaminated potentially. A much larger area so that containment piece i think is critical um are are the what's the uptake on training and awareness i i, I would you know, i would think that would lead you know obviously the the procurement of the, the some devices um how, how active is are you guys seeing that space for you it, it's actually increasing so we have companies that have taken on you know that train 100 people for them that sure. I, I would argue that most of the screening all, almost all that you need to do can be done without a lot of technology with somebody who gets shown the right way to do physical and tactile inspection, knows what they're looking for, and then can remove all those things that we would be worried about, take this is clean, don't worry about it, 
to now we got to scan a very small amount of stuff. And mm. most facilities that we talk to, we, we talk to companies that say have 25 facilities. They really only need equipment at say the top two, three or four. The rest of them are eight people in a building in Ottawa or somewhere in Omaha. You just want to make sure those eight people are safe. And they know what they're doing and you do that through training. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, it tends to precede everything. This um, uh, this awareness uh, campaign, you know, that you guys, you guys are obviously, you know, sharing with people. Um, are, are is this going to be happening like at uh, GSX? Are you guys going to have a, a booth out there? Are you doing any presentations or any talks there that we could uh, advertise while we're on here today? We, we tried to get on GSS talk circuit, but uh, mail is not necessarily the most inviting thing for, uh, for GSX, <laughs> although maybe now they might have space. Uh, we are going to be a GSX. We do have a booth there. Okay. And we have, uh, we're, we're, again, we do quarterly webinars. We do all sorts of stuff. If you go to our website, you can track and, and just, we're trying to educate people. Uh, a few yeah. of our partners use the term flatten the curve where we're trying to do that. So everybody understands more, more probability of what's happening to them in their mailroom and not necessarily the worst case. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Understood. Yeah, I'll be down there. So I'll, I'll definitely swing by and chat with you guys. I'd like to take a look at some of the technology. Um, so we've got a minute or so left. Um, what what's the what's the one takeaway um, you'd like to share with the audience today? Um, you know, from from your experience uh, with this industry? Unfortunately, a lot of people look at this like it's just mail. It's it, you know, you'll we'll talk to CSOs or talk to people and they'll like, look, I had that gun in my in the mail three weeks ago. That was nothing. I had the hazmat team next to my desk, you know, eleven months ago, but whatever. And I don't realize that's a string of events that shows you a symptom to a problem. And unfortunately, people look at mail oftentimes and go, yeah, okay, it's just the mail. Except it walks all the way up to in front of the people who you're trying to protect the most. If you don't do something about it before it gets there, uh, unfortunately, you're going to have a bad day in the long run. Yeah, I love that. Will, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. that insight. Folks, check out your mail. Think, give some thought. Check out the materials they have for training. This is a serious duty of care issue. I love that term. You know, if we're taking care of our people, uh, we, we need to take care of the stuff that could harm them. And that's this is something that's inbound. It's a wide open door for a lot of organizations. So um, check out Race Secure if you're down at GSX. Uh, check out the video. But um, this is a threat. This is a threat that we can all work on uh, together and make our, our world, make our businesses, make our communities safer. Will, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, we'll see you down at GSX. Thank you, Andrew. See you there. All righty. Take care, everybody. Aloha.